Hi, I'm Larry Leach, proud executive director of 12 Community Safety Initiative, and this is Diversity. During the pandemic, we held seven sessions over Zoom aimed at learning more about the diverse cultures and people in our communities. Our guest panelists were asked a series of four questions aimed at identifying some of the challenges they face, what supports could help, and how those of us in community can help welcome newcomers into our neighborhoods. This is the second episode of Diversity Series, where we've captured the information from our second question. I'll start by introducing our guest panelists. Colby DeLorme. Daryl Castro. Mayor Yang. Ernie Alama. Quinn Lee. Anthony Antonio Jim. Core Top. Brenda Marmalejo. Gucharan Tin. Patricia Cruz. Elder Doreen Spence. And Cam Stewart. Thank you all for participating today. Okay, let's go to our second question. What kind of supports would you want for your community members? Take it away, Colby. I'm the past chair of Muskunawa. Now uh, that's an organization in Calgary that um, that works uh, with our indigenous families and youth doing the, the social work for children's services. So this is very difficult work, uh, very controversial work for uh, indigenous people. One of the things that our CEO at Muskunawa talks about is the, the practice of culturally appropriate programming and social services. Through the act of using culturally appropriate uh, models, you know, our families feel that we are truly working with them, trying to be proactive, um, trying to ensure that, you know, these extreme measures are not um, employed and and used upon them and when they are used that they are not working within a model that is um, completely debilitating. I think that there's other organizations, other service uh, sectors that could learn from um, employing these strategies of, of culturally appropriate services. Thank you very much, Colby. Daryl, you're next. Uh, the number one thing I've seen as, um, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like a lot of my generation experiences a lot of mental issues, mental health issues. Unfortunately for the Filipino culture, I don't wanna speak for everybody, for, but as much as I know, a lot of them don't believe in mental health and just shrug off and call it ma'arte, which is a uh, Filipino for basically being dramatic. So a lot of um, the people in my don't face it, their issues at all and it just goes bad. Um, really terrible because I think I've actually known two people in my high school who have committed suicide um, out of depression. And I feel like if they did get the help that they needed, they could have um, gone, it could have gone differently. I feel like it would be nice if I could see uh, more affordable programs and ones that will actually keep it a secret, you know, because I know some people who have tried to go to doctors and they've told their parents. So <laughs> that's kind of um, something I wish there were more of. Thank you. Over to you, Mayor. I just think that, you know, to, to break a negative cycle, I think the most effective route is to work on the kids and work with the kids, you know, um, pour into them so that when they do grow up, they see the value of uh, volunteering and giving back and, and, you know, pouring into other people. I think that is the best way to go. And um, I think it definitely reaps a lot of benefits um, from what I've seen in my own life. Thank you, Mayor. Over to you, Ernie. I wonder if 
those subgroupings and bubbles in our community can be reached out because there, there's, if you talk about asset-based community uh, development, um, you know, these are actually existing assets in our community, but I'm not sure if we've been tapped. We have an existing prior community in, in, uh, in at the Holy Trinity. It's a Filipino-based community, but we're kind of just living in our own bubble. And then another one that I can see support, maybe I already mentioned, maybe a community shared space, uh, the community where a community can go and have conversation. I have in my cell phone called the next, next door app. The next door app connects uh, the people within the greatest forest lawn area. If I look at that app and look at what's going on in my community, I think it's very, very uh, useful at this point in time. Thanks, Ernie. On to you, Quinn. I have been to our community for nearly one year, but I didn't know that uh, we have a community association, I mean, the, some activity in our community that in the neighborhood that I live. But when I start research, I know that there is association here and they have so many activity, but I didn't know. So it means, it means that there is a gap in communication. They don't, uh, they don't approach the new, all the community in the, living in the neighborhoods. So we don't know about that. And, and to solve the language barrier, we may, we may uh, add more first language so, so they can approach more people who, who have been language barrier. And uh, the third uh, one, another support that I, I may think about is that it's very helpful when we have at least one or two first language in the community of each community association. We have all uh, different ethnic city. It's more helpful to approach to all of our people. Thank you. Take it away, Antonio. I would love to see more information being reached out to newcomers, just like the, the way that um, Gwen just mentioned. Uh, we do have the Vietnamese association here. It is a very active one but somehow the newcomers come and they couldn't find it on the internet. I didn't know why, but I would love to be more accessible. So I would love to see more workshop or more um, forums like that for the newcomers uh, to present to them, okay, this is the lifestyle in Canada. When you go to a family uh, or whatever gathering, for example, after COVID, it's okay to hug. It's okay for male, female to interact. It's okay for married people to hug each other, for example, <laughs> uh, something like that. Um, a certain thing is not about right or wrong, it is different. And accepting differences is sometimes this time and uh, information for the newcomers. Thank you, Antonio. Hor, what do you think? Uh, as far as the, the support is needed, it's concerned, this is where I think the cultural communities need to work with community association and partner with agencies like 12 CSI to work together to build on a community, to build that diversity, to build community members, to build the support of collaborations working together. Thank you, Cor. Brenda? When we as an immigrant or as newcomers, um, transitioning into a new life in a new country is not only financially difficult, but also socially and psychologically challenging. It's very, very, and emotionally, it's very, very difficult to do that. For me, accessing different resources and programs that I found in the city really helped me to, to settle in Calgary. And um, it, it was actually CCIS. I, that, that's what, that was the first um, organization that I found. And I started attending a bunch of workshops and things that, that they were offering uh, for, for newcomers. And that really made my life easier and, and still does. But I think not all the immigrants know that those resources are available. So we need to, I don't know. We need, I don't know what we need to do, but I'm, I know that we need to do something to um, to let them know that there's a bunch of resources that are not necessarily financial resources, that are, are other kind of supports in the city available for everyone. 
That was great. Thank you. Uh, Gurcharan. The thing of concern for me is that uh, the people who migrate over here, they bring very big degrees with them. Some are PhD, some are masters. And they have to go through a process to do the bachelor sometimes again. So this thing some really pinches me that why not our universities, maybe of Latin America, maybe of South India, uh, South Asia, why they are not uh, thought to be equal to these universities or universities of Europe. Anything to add, Patricia? Uh, yes, we have a lot to offer uh, to this country because that's why we are coming. Canada needs people, you know. And um, go to easy the process of um, accreditation. I think that is going to be uh, very important in all levels. And I know that this is a huge topic that is going in, the, in a huge level. In the high level, the government say one thing because government knows that it, we need immigrants. But uh, the college and the professional um, schools say another thing. Yes, but you have to do this. You have to do that. And it's not like a, we are asking for a special treatment. We are asking to facilitate the process. Don't make it more difficult than it, it is already. Just speaking about my process, I spent 10 years. I had the resources and I have the, the patience to, be, to go to the over all this time. But I know everyone has that time. And it's win-win because it's gonna have more professionals. Well, that's good for us too. Thanks, Patricia. Elder Doreen Spence. We've always had to think outside the box. We've always had to be forced to learn other people's culture and traditions and honor and respect them. But what I always found sad was they knew nothing about our culture, which really is the foundation of, of Canada and North America on a global scale, we're very much honored when we travel to other countries like in Europe, people just will book solid to just have an opportunity of, ta of talking to you and uh, access the wisdom. And so for me, uh, it's learning the culture. I'd like to hear Cam's take on on this too, because Cam, I've been mentoring him for a few years now, so he knows both both worlds. And I think uh, he'd have a lot to add to this too as well. Hi, hi. Yeah, I've been blessed to um, work and, and learn by many elders. Uh, I, I've been very honored to participate in two fast vision quests with with grandmother. Um, and those are some of the highlights of my, of my life, both spiritually and intellectually. To me, it's about cultural appreciation instead of appropriation. And really, it's not up to Indigenous people to teach us about them, plain and simple. <laughs> it's about us to learn, to ask the questions, to listen to the, to, to the knowledge keepers. And, and I think this is a good opportunity for people here is to ask those questions and listen to the stories. Thank you, Cam. And thank you to all of our panelists for openly sharing their experiences. You have certainly given us a lot to consider. I look forward to hearing your answers to the third question in the third and next episode of Diversity. Diversity.